I'm sure that you've had a very interesting uh, morning here, and uh, I understand the topic is to grow companies and how to how to um, improve growth, improve expansion. And I also take it that I am here as the living example of a mature entrepreneur who had the guts to start a company and had the guts to grow it, because that's what it takes. It's guts, uh, willpower and guts, and um, lots of hard work, of course. Um, I thought I had a small presentation, but it's not up. Okay. Well, uh, collector finance in the future is one of our slogans. And the future is very important for us, not only in Sweden, but also in Finland and in the Nordic countries. Because we have been, been a bit spoiled with our base industry, the forest industry with pulp and paper, steel, shipyards. But uh, there is no m more expansion in the base industry. You know that the forest industry is suffering hard from producing um, printed newspaper, for example. They are closing uh, production lines all the time now. And what we need is new companies coming up in all lines of business. Um, in Sweden, we are especially fond of services. But the service industry is very um, underestimated, um, I think. I think both in Finland and Sweden, we are known to be very efficient people, very hardworking, and providing good service and also innovative. And that is a very good combination for creating new companies. It could be new companies within mature business, but with, with a new angle. And uh, the new angle is basically the um, necessity for an entrepreneur. You have to think outside the box. And uh, we think that collector could help you to think outside the box, because an entrepreneur has to concentrate on his core business, work real hard, uh, should not spend too much time in finding bank lines, capital, etc. And uh, we have tried to create a collector who takes care of lots of administration and also financing. Uh, the factoring service, for example, is a very easy example. If you just uh, um, outsource your, your ledger, your receivables, you will not only get rid of administration, but you will also get rid of risk and you will get you will get the cash. And cash flow is of essence. You all know that. It's very hard to grow a company if you don't have a good cash flow. Uh, and cash flow is one of the most common problems every new company is struggling with. What Collector could do uh, in this way, it's uh, somehow we are a bit similar to a bank, but less than a bank. We don't provide all services. We provide few services, but we are really good at those. And factoring is one of the most popular among corporates. Uh, we also take pride in being a bit different than banks. Um, I know because I've been uh, working in banks lots of years before I found a collector. Uh, by the way, I don't know if the introduction was, I heard my name, Lena Appler. I'm the founder, shareholder, and CEO of Collector Group. Um, I'm sure you all knew that because you <laughs> said that in Finnish probably. Yeah. But in case, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what I try to bring was my experience from banking and uh, to um, also to learn what I thought we were not good at in banks. And one thing we were not good at was speed. Banks are extremely slow. And nowadays, at least in Sweden, slower than ever. You have to wait for months before you get even an, an answer to your request. So we, we put speed as one of our keywords. And also flexibility, and of course a pra professional um, approach. We are entrepreneurs ourselves, so we know the entrepreneurs' both problems and um, and situations. So we try to think as entrepreneurs, even if we have grown a bit and we've been around for 14 years now. But still, we keep the mindset of entrepreneurs, and that makes us more fit to serve entrepreneurs. That's at least our hope. Uh, I know there's a very um, embarrassing slide coming up now, because that's my history. Uh, I'm uh, most disturbed of the first line, because I don't think it's necess necessary to uh, uh, announce my age, but still, that's my marketing manager. She, she thinks it's uh, obviously necessary. Anyway, 
I was born in the, um, not in Gothenburg or Stockholm, but in the uh, west coast in, uh, in the textile um, village of Borås, where, by the way, I had about 10 schoolmates who were born in Finland. You know, there was big, big um, export of labor from Finland to Sweden in, in the 50s. So, uh, but I didn't pick up on the Finnish, though. Uh, then I've um, been working with a few banks, and in the former finance crisis in the early 90s, I was uh, heading the finance company of the state-owned Securum. And that was probably the time when my entrepreneurial little soul started to grow. Because I realized after Securum, I will no way go back to bank. The most uh, similar example you had in Finland, I think, is Arsenal. Arsenal was created a couple of years after. And I know that we had a big delegation from Arsenal coming up to Stockholm to see Securum and ask how we did it. And obviously, they did it well in Finland as well, also, I understand. Anyway, after Securum, uh, I felt the, uh, I, we had enormous responsibility, enormous freedom. So I felt like banking was no longer the scope for me. So I found a collector together with a colleague. And he's still around. Uh, although he's uh, a little bit retired, <laughs> half time. Uh, Would you say, Mika? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Forty years ago, I was not as sure as today that we could continue to grow and grow and grow and will grow for the next 40 years to come. Because when you see from the outside, the line of success seems very straight, but it's not in reality. It has been lots of drawbacks and small um, hiccups during the way. But that goes with the entrepreneurship. So that's what I meant with willpower. You have to be persistent and come over the hiccups you meet. Uh, for, for our sake, I would say that the first two years were the most uh, problematic years, when we have to really fight to prove ourselves. But after two years, things started to happen. and. Uh, after five years, it happened even faster. And the big issue for us was when we decided to become a full-scale finance company under the supervision of the Swedish Finance Inspection. That's Finance Inspection Authority. You have it in Finland. It's called... Uh, Finance Valvonta. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, We started with three people, and now we've grown to 240 people. We had our headquarters in Gothenburg, basically because, because I live there. Otherwise, Stockholm is the typical capital and city where you have your headquarters, but Gothenburg is good enough. It's the second city, and uh, the cost of labor is a bit cheaper in Gothenburg than in Stockholm, so it's a good thing. And then we decided after a few years uh, that uh, Sweden is interesting, but we have Nordic neighbors. And uh, that was our consumer business, because we, we do lots of consumer business. Um, E-commerce, private loans without security, deposit taking. And uh, at le not least our um, mail order companies had big activities in both Finland and Norway. And uh, we decided to, uh, since we had a couple of them as customers, we decided to, uh, to try the Finnish market. Uh, we tried very... Um, uh, small to start with, without any office at all. We, we hired a couple of students from Finland who studied economy in Sweden. And they helped us out with the forms and the language and how to do it. But we realized that the growth came quicker than we thought. So was it in 2006, Mika, or seven? Six. We realized that we have to have uh, an office in Finland and also have uh, some staff in Finland. And that was a big step for us to take, because we didn't understand the language and we didn't really know how to do it. But I'm proud to say that after seven years, um, Mika has really uh, developed and grown a successful business. And now we feel we are uh, fully equipped to continue the growth also in Finland. We like the Nordic countries. Um, we have very small market shares in the Nordic countries. So we intend to stay in the Nordic countries and not look so much outside the Nordic countries. Plenty of headroom to grow in both Finland, Norway and Sweden. We understand that the major issue we have for entrepreneurs is to provide cash flow, provide services. 
Um, we don't talk so much about lending and borrowing, but provide services. Of course, that includes also some lending. Factoring customers could, from time to time, get uh, bridge loans, working capital facilities, etc. But no um, real estate loans, no long-term loans. <coughs> Financially, we oh, my time is over, but still, I'm going to give you some figures. <laughs> <laughs> the total assets uh, as per year in 2012 was uh, about uh, 425 million euros, to be exact. Now we are up. We have exceeded the four million, four billion kroner. That is almost 500 million euros in balance as per end of April, which is a milestone, of course. Um, the turnover will this year grow with about 25 percent. I would say so. We have some 68.5, and that is, of course, net turnover. We uh, measure fees and uh, interest, not the total gross turnover, because that would be huge amounts. And since we uh, measure the net turnover, the profit seems to be very high. And it's a good profit, I must admit. But if we had the gross figures, maybe it would have seemed more modest. Uh, as I said, the growth has been ongoing for 14 years, and uh, we can't see any reasons why we should not continue to grow. grow. Um, as long as our customers give us the uh, confidence and make business with us, the growth will continue. And we see a future where the major banks may have to split the market with niche actors like ourselves. Um, in Ask a 10-year-old girl or boy what a bank is, they don't know, because they, they get money from the house wall and their parents pay their bills back home in the tea room. So we think that traditional banks will have to uh, reconsider a bit about the future, and that gives room for niche actors as collector. Um, I congratulate Mika for this um, nice event. Uh, I see that you have uh, invited a number of interesting companies. Hope that all of you will be customers to us if you're not already. And that this first event shall not be the only one, but maybe a sort of a yearly event with different themes. And maybe one day we will uh, hear some words from me in Finnish. Maybe some of you will say something in Swedish. Uh, the language barrier is not, not too big for, for us because we are all used to speak English, but otherwise it's strange not to understand a single word in your neighbor country, I must admit. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Lena. Thank you.